Uh-oh, novel time. Drums in it. There's a novel. Of you and your friends in it. And me. Oh, yes, Spike. <laughs> Thank you.
here. Here is five. Episode two. From the mini car and the car breakers. By Mr. Christopher James Rush as the new storyteller. Chapter One The Grand's Meeting. Two figures met in the scrapyards. They looked at each other, then knew each other. Ash. News, said Miss Grand. A dozen, said Mr. Grand. We must report our father. They came to an old house, which they lived in for many years. Their father was at the table. What have you got to say, Mr. Grant? said their father. He was old and had poor health. I've been found out by the little yellow car. I just saw him heading to the Cotswold Mercury Museum just to buy something and head home to Tasmania. We need to know where he lives, but we can't tell his wanderings because he has smart ways of stopping any criminals, the father said when he finished speaking. It's time you two should get him scrapped. He escaped my other two sons, who took him to the car breaker's yard. You may need to track him down and bring him to me. What, what plans do you have for us to get the little car? asked Miss Brown. Miss Grand. Well, all you have to do is track him down, then take him to me, or if he, if it be wise, him trying to get away from us, he might hunt, we might hunt him down together. I've been listening. I've been listening to what Brum was planning. He's planning to visit Wales. That's where we might stalk him. Uh, let's hope that car will never exist. He has many things he did in life and has wanted to be a star on YouTube. Wait a minute. Dad, he's not alone. We've forgotten he's got this man named Captain Crook. So he's invited him to live in Tasmania. Well, we'll get him too. And this time, this island, whatever it is, will never run again. The father was starting to stagger, then fell. Miss and Mr. Ground bent down at him and knew he was dead and had to go broke. Find Brum and me to get. But they didn't know that I had been spying on them and knew they were planning a mindless way of invading Tasman Sodor, and decided to tell Brum what I heard.
Your father is careless, Tech and Teddy, said me. Aunt Lord, and ran off before either of them would catch sight of me. Chapter 2 Brom and me heading to the secret branch line station. I came back to Brom to tell him we got some grounds after us. When I came to his first home, Brom, we've got a task to do. Where to visit the secret branch line station shop and find what else is hidden. Like when your plans were made, they were hidden. My plans? What about them? What happened to them? Nightmare Moon told me she hid it somewhere in the station. But we have a problem. Tech and Teddy are hunting us down doing this for their father. They want the money when they scrap you, given to the owner of this museum. I've decided to use plan B. Where to move before they begin their hunt? Are you sure we can get them back? We just need to get them off our tail by leading them into the, into the trap. Smelly and Jack did it to the other lump hooks. What you're saying is you're wanting to do the same thing as them? I quite agree. We might plan a trick on them. I hopped in the back seat and Brom drove out of the museum. It was just the afternoon so we had time to go off.
We drove on along the road to Wales at first. We were alone. But we had to keep a lookout for stalkers. Mr. Grant has pegged the scent of Brum's fume smell. Clearly, they seem to know where we're going. Brum and I were realising that perhaps Plan B wasn't a good idea. We knew we needed them to not know what we're looking for. They went to the car park and began to follow us. Two p.m. and we arrived in Wales. This was the same out of bounds place. Me and my other friends visited. When the other Lamports were after us, there was a road Brown knows it very well and said to me he used it for years, but now we're about to use it. We had to cover up the entrance so the grounds wouldn't find us, but we had to be careful not to get tricked from them that would try to get there first before us. We might have to wait for them, Brum, said me. But don't forget our trap. We have to make, said Brum. Okay, what am I to do? Put some mud on them. Then they'll crash. Good thinking. Quick now, here they come. We hid. The grounds came up. looking for where we went, but they couldn't find which route we took. Suddenly something splashed on them. <coughs> oh! cried Mrs. Ground. Ah! cried Mr. Ground. They went crashing through the woods, just as we peeped out to see what had happened. They crashed straight into a swamp somewhere. Quick, now's our chance at Brum. We went out of sight to, to the secret branch line station before the grounds would even have a chance to wake up and look up. Continued. 
We drove through the woods and came to the same station we found. We had to find the plans. They were somewhere in the room. Bram was looking in the wall because he noticed a crack. Sir, look, said Bram. I saw what he found. The crack was in our eyesight. And I felt the wall. It didn't seem flat. It was lump-like. Hmm. What is in there? I thought, wondered. I grabbed some cutting item like a knife and peeled off the lump. It was a box. And inside was what we were looking for. Your pants, Bram, we found them. Great. Do you think we can get home now? We've finished our stay in the museum, I visit. Not quite, Bram. We still got the grounds to get rid of. They might have struggled out of their wrecked car. We must move before they hunt us down in the woods. If they do, we'll lure them to the Welsh docks. Come on, let's leave and look out for them. We went out of the station shop with the plans safe with us. But we were about to head for a hold-up. As we were about to leave, saw wheel tracks looking and following them, we found the wrecked car. That's their car, all right. It's crashed in that tree. We'd best move close to it, carefully. They might still be in it. The car 
car for a surprising reason had a strong foul stench. If there was something which was bothering our smell, scent it was what we could think of smell of blood. And when we looked in the car, it was empty. The grounds were not in it. Hmm. One of them might have broken a tooth when the crash happened, said me. There was something that was interesting for us to see. I took out a book. It's the family book. They hid it in here for at least 12 days and 79 years ago. We'll take it to the police before we get home. Brum saw the track made from the grounds we were about to follow them, but thought better not to, because I suspected they were up to something of wanting us. We'll follow the tracks and keep quiet, said me. They might be outside. There's no need, said Brum. Look. We looked up and then started to get a panic. The grounds were waiting outside. There was no way to get past them. We had their book and Brum's plans. Plan. I remembered what I heard from them saying, meaning they would scrap Brum and hold me hostage. They would question me and I would be in trouble of getting closer to death when they would criminalize my home and murder me. That was a bad thought. I wouldn't like to think up. Brown didn't like the thought either. We were trapped. There was no way of escape. Our situation was becoming desperate until Brum saw a hidden route through the other parts of the woods. There's a shortcut, sir. We can reach the main road when we use it. Good idea, Brum. Outside the wood, the two car breakers were waiting for their victims, Miss Grant, was angry about her tooth she broke and was spitting blood out of her mouth. And Mr. Grunt had a so hurt nose that he couldn't breathe properly. He was breathing a little. Those scoundrels will pay for what? They did to us, said Miss Grant. I want to go into plastic surgery after this, said Mr. Grant. That man put mud on us. Worse happened to his nose. He broke a nose bone and would definitely get his skull restored when he goes into plastic surgery. Just wait till I crunch his face. None of them noticed we were sneaking along a shortcut, and when we were behind them, we quietly went off. 
the noise of Brum driving away alert at the grounds. I looked up to see we had tricked them. We better stalk them. They're getting away. Here, yeah, they'll never get away this time. They would have to run because the car was ruined. We came to the police station and told them. The policeman, who wondered what was going on, we explained the grounds were after us and to prove this case was true. I gave him the secret book. We'll see what we can do with them, said the policeman. We drove off and the grounds came into sight. When they stopped to catch their breath, the police caught them. Get on the ground right now! The ground's bigot whose fault it was about this plot. They did, and they knew their father wouldn't help them because he was dead.